It's time for the Sports Blitz, the only live streamed local sports show in Arkansas with all the latest on the sports stories that matter to you. You are looking live, as Brent Musburger would say, the River Valley Leader Studios here, the Cogswell Motor Studio, home of the RiverValleyLeader.com. Mark Freeman, Brad Caldwell, Maddie Lassiter here to bring you the latest in local, statewide, and national sports. We're going to look at the Hogs. Man, it's game week. We talked about it on Monday, and it's getting even closer as tomorrow there are college football games for the first time all season. I am pumped. I'm ready to go, Brad. We're going to look at the games tomorrow night, North Carolina, South Carolina, Ole Miss, Vandy. Uh, we'll also talk about Johnny Manziel. Mm-hmm. Plenty of hog talk today also. Plenty of hog talk. And then, man, you've got Saturday coming up. you got the hogs playing Saturday. Georgia Clemson playing Saturday. Alabama, Virginia Tech playing. So, man, it's going to be a full slate of college football for me, I can tell you. My wife told me when uh, we got together that she thought she liked football uh. until she met me. <laughs> yeah, and then she decided Seriously. she Seriously. really figured out These that she po- didn't like it. These autoplay videos on ESPN will kill you. There's a place you can just tell it to not do LSU, that. LSU, TCU, by the way. By the way, look at uh, the rankings. LSU is number 20. TCU is number 12. TCU is number 12. Tw- Are you sure it's not backwards? I'm looking at it right here unless ESPN's got it messed up because the so old ESPN autoplay... Had it- <laughs> video there. ESPN had a uh, had TCU number Maybe twenty. They may have yeah, it. It's, it's yeah. backwards. Okay. TCU's number twenty and LSU's number twelve. Uh, either way, that's still two top twenty teams playing one another on opening weekend, and it's overload. So what it is? You've got, you've got Alabama playing Virginia Tech, and all the. Uh, Pats on the back from Nick Saban yep. to Frank Beamer and from Frank Beamer saying this is the best team I've ever played against. Remember that 01 Miami team that yeah. had everybody and their mama on it? You know, and all those pros. Sadly, he said they're, they're better than them. Sadly, they're pretty close, probably. They're they're not close. You don't think so? Maybe on the field now, but as far as like looking back historically at what those guys have accomplished later on in their careers, that's not true. close. I mean, that's that, the best team ever put on the field. You think? As far as looking at what they were going to do in their future, my goodness, you had Frank Gore as like a third team or something like that. It was unbelievable. They were they, they were. I mean, they didn't have a quarterback worth of crap. But <laughs> and they didn't have a coach worth of crap, or they'd won like seventeen national championships in a row. Well, they didn't have they didn't have any. Discipline well, whatsoever. you know, Butch Davis built it. He leaves, and then they bring in oh, what's his head, Larry Coker. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what's his head? He wins a national championship. He wins a national championship, then he loses one, and then it was a steady decline after yeah. that. Even though they were completely loaded steel. Man, we are packed, jammed full today of stuff to talk about. We've got some Razorback tickets. I don't know if you've heard about it, but we've been doing this contest at rivervalleyleader.com where you can go, all you have to do, and we've got the uh, story available at rivervalleyleader.com if you want to. You can just go search Hogs tickets, and you can probably find that easily. Uh, but we're giving away these two tickets on Friday during the Sports Blitz, right about noon, uh, just before the show ends. We will announce who wins those two tickets to go watch the Hogs in Louisiana Lafayette on Saturday. But all you have to do to win is go to facebook.com slash RVL News, find the uh, the little story, which we'll post several times throughout the day, that announces that there are tickets to be able to, to be won, and share that on your wall. You have to make sure you have liked the RVL page. All you have to do is click like. You like River Valley Leader, the Facebook page. Share that on your wall. You're entered to win. We will go through and we'll tally up all the people who have uh, shared that status and liked River Valley Leader from Monday to Friday. All the people who've shared that on their wall entered to win. We will randomly draw. We'll do it on video. Uh, we'll hey. randomly draw so that, you know, we've tried to do that so people don't say, hey, you guys just picked who you wanted to. So we, we got it on uh, some documentation. Well, who cares? Here. We can do that. That's uh-huh. a, It's a free country. <laughs> yeah, well, it's kind of, I don't know. It's uh, I'm just kidding. I really am just kidding. Either way. Because uh, when you screw somebody out of their Razorback tickets, it's a serious matter. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll draw those Friday just before noon. We hope you'll be able to watch. If not, though, that doesn't disqualify you from winning if you can't watch. Now, we would prefer that you do. And we might even, I don't know, if you are watching when uh, the tickets are given away, we may throw something else in. I don't know. Maddie, you got some random cords over there or something? Got a, a tape or a battery or something we could give them? Maddie will kiss you right on the mouth, he said. Uh, so we'll give you something. And if you're listening, 
uh, on Friday. You have a chance. Even if you're not, you'll have a chance to win these two tickets, and we look forward to that giveaway. Let's get started, though, with Peter's Family Living Local Sports look. I was able to, Monday and Tuesday, catch up on some local sports. We've got an intern coming in this afternoon. We're going to talk a little bit about the coverage of the football season. He's going to be at Pottsville for Pottsville Heber Springs next Friday. I'm going to be at Moralton for uh, Russellville at Moralton, and then I'm going to Lamar. So I'm, it's going to be a long wow. night for me, uh, but it's going to be a good time watching some local football and being able to partake in that uh, opening season action. But got to go watch some scrimmages on Monday. Russellville Junior High took on Clarksville here at Cyclone Stadium on Monday, and then also on Tuesday, Clarksville High School faced uh, Subiaco. Russellville took on uh, Rogers Heritage here at home, and Lamar took on Berryville in some scrimmage action. So these guys finally getting to hit somebody from the other team, and right. you can tell, you can tell from watching when they hit each other to when they go to hit somebody in a different color jersey. It's a different level, and they're just ramping up for next yeah, week. No doubt, but uh, I think this whole season starting a week later has also that, that's affected their psyches a little bit too, because you know usually. Friday is when we're looking at, at football, yep. and um, we're we're, look, we're gonna have to wait a week for high school football. So these guys are getting ready; they're getting ramped up. Man, it's hot. People are agitated. They're tired of of playing ball with their own team. They're ready yeah. to play ball with somebody else. Yeah, definitely. And they're excited about getting the show on the road. Some folks who are trying to put up put on a show so that they can get noticed recruiting wise. Uh, you saw yesterday, although Russellville did fall in a it was a two-quarter scrimmage against Rogers Heritage. The two touchdowns, they, they lost 21-14. to 14. The two touchdowns, Coach East Temple Laws and Jalen Curtis, the two wide receiver studs for the Cyclones. They're going to rely on them very heavily. I do need to pass along some information, though. It's sad information. Jeffrey Benton, talented uh, Clarksville football player who's going to play a little wide receiver and a little defensive back, broke his foot mm. yesterday in uh, the football game, actually dislocated his foot, and it was a terrible-looking injury. Uh, reminds me of when I was a senior, one of our guys broke his leg in two places, and it just the whole stadium was just a hush. You could hear him screaming from the end zone. Uh. I was in the stands. Uh, and it was apparently a really bad injury. He went to the hospital. They sent him on to Children's Hospital, so it was a really bad deal. We need to send along our prayers and thoughts to Jeffrey Benton and his family. Know his family well. Uh, his brother, actually, is Casey Benton, the ninth grader who's coming up to play with the Clarksville basketball team this year. Uh, but I've known Jeffrey a long time. My little brother was friends with him when they were just really little. Really quiet, really nice kid. And was going to make a big contribution to the team, but either way, he's going to have to recover from this, and the team's going to have to recover because it's never easy to watch one of your own go down. No. It's tough. A dislocated foot is a horrible, horrible injury, too. And to have to go to Children's and, Hospital, yeah. there had to have been some complications. Yeah. It's scary. Yeah, it is, no doubt. And you don't ever want to lose anybody, but especially in a preseason game, that means nothing. But, uh, yeah, we'll send our thoughts and prayers along, and hopefully he can – um, possibly get back before the end of the season on this. It was a dislocated ankle is what, uh, oh. what Coach Banning said. So I talked to him last night, and he uh, – yeah, it was, it's a bad deal there for, for Benton and his uh, his family and the team because he was going to be counted on to do some big things. But that's beside the point. He needs to, uh, to know that we're praying and thinking uh, good thoughts toward him and his team and his family. So uh, we'll – continue to monitor that situation let you know what happens with that but uh, next Friday it's going to be a good day for those that are actually able mm -hmm. to play uh, but we'll be fully covering the River Valley this year we'll keep you up to date with all the latest in scores I know uh, I was listening to an interview with Lanny Beavers from hogville.net and fearlessfriday.com uh, yesterday and yeah never heard of this fearless Friday yeah. I thought it was fearless Friday yeah. Nights or anyway, something. I don't know. he uh, he did a little interview yesterday, and he was talking about how they do a scoreboard every quarter. They keep up with the scores. Well, that's statewide. We're gonna just keep the ten schools that we cover in the area on Facebook. So it's gonna be even quicker than that. We're just gonna have a representative from anywhere. It's, okay, Pottsville scored, Dover scored, Atkins scored, Two Rivers right. scored, and we're gonna have that going on a, a Facebook status all night. You'll be able to know by the end of the game who you know who's winning. You'll hopefully you'll have somebody there who's saying you know fourth and goal with twelve seconds left. You know that kind of thing. Legit, you'll have right it there. really really quick. So we're looking forward to a great great local sports season. I. uh 
like I said, got to go to Clarksville yesterday and watch their basketball practice. It was a pretty fun, uh, pretty fun basketball. deal there. As they got What's that? ten, yeah, they got ten guys right now who are going to be able to play next year, and they only had about six that they could count on to contribute last year, maybe seven. Uh, and that was actually there were two guys that were uh, probably going to be counted on to be big contributors this year that were not able to make it yesterday. One's ineligible, and one was playing tennis, but did get to see that uh, Clarksville's got some new video boards on the scorer's table. It's pretty cool. They're going to get to run back some highlights, do a little uh, – they may even come here, Maddie, to the studio, to the green screen – to shoot them, stand in front of the green screen, spinning a ball or whatever, and put them on the moon or something. I don't know. So we can do something <laughs> cool for their pregame intros. They'll get a picture and their name and their stats right there as they're getting introduced before the game. Uh, but it's it's looking pretty cool. That's pretty Coach cool. Davis was uh, was nice happy touch. with that. Although they can't build him a gym, they can at least get him a nice looking video board on the scorer's table. <laughs> <laughs> they, they need a new gym. Yes, now. they do. They do. That's kind of like putting a necktie on a turd, but <laughs> you know, whatever. You know, whatever. You said it. You I, did. I, that I did. just happened. All right. Well, that's our local sports <laughs> look. End it with a bang there. But again, uh, we mentioned on Monday the NYBC All Star Game that was Monday afternoon. Big congratulations to Peyton Holt and Brock Pounders from Russellville for being able to play in that 13 year old all-star game there on CBS. I actually found out after the show that um, Peyton Holt's mom went to Clarksville and was a friend of my, uh, her sister, she was the sister to two guys I graduated with, twins, uh, there at Clarksville. So a little, you know, world's a small place type thing where I, uh, I knew her. So congratulations again to Peyton Holt and Brock Pounders on being able to play on national TV, some yeah. baseball. That was That's pretty cool. Pretty I remember neat, we, we almost got to play some flag football on national tv but we weren't quite good enough to make <laughs> it that quite. far <laughs> not quite not quite we were we, we were, were at the tournament there. we were, we were at the there. tournament but we didn't quite get that far nobody wants to watch old guys play flag football though no we, we there was as like far as we there could. was probably like five people watching that whole broadcast i don't even think they do it anymore no so that's was, why because there's five people watching the broadcast it was worth a shot well We've got plenty of stuff. We're going to take our first break. We've got plenty of stuff to hit. Johnny Manziel, what do you do if you're a head coach and if you're Texas A&M? What do you do if you're Kevin Sumlin, if you're the administration to Texas A&M about this Johnny Manziel situation? Do you play him? Do you sit him? I've got an unpopular opinion plus plenty of other stuff that we can hit today on the show. Today, there are more than 20 brands of cars being sold in America. So to be noticed, Ford and Cogswell Motors have to go further than anyone thought we could. How does Ford stand out above the crowd? Not just with plug-in vehicles like the new 2013 Ford Fusion Energy that gets a projected 100 miles per gallon equivalent, but also with a line of gas vehicles equipped with the innovative EcoBoost engines combining power and efficiency, plus a full measure of technologically advanced features. We invite you to stop into Cogswell Motors today. We go further than anyone thought we could, so that you can go further too. RiverValleyLeader.com is the number one local source for instant news in the River Valley offering HD video and live streaming along with top-notch coverage of all the news and events around the area. The River Valley Leader is the only place to go for all the information you need. Check out the newest local business featured on the site as well as police news and coverage from important meetings along with the personal stories all at one convenient click. Check out RiverValleyLeader.com. Over 69 years of treating you like family, Peter's Family Living's main goal is customer service. That is their promise to their customers. They offer in-house financing on furniture and appliances and a 30-day money-back guarantee. For a friendly, no-pressure atmosphere, visit Peter's Family Living today at 201 North Arkansas Avenue, Russellville, online at petersfamilyliving.com or call 479-968-2929. If you didn't count on KARK for today, this morning, here's what you may. Updated news. Please continue searching for suspects after a home intrusion overnight. Developing stories. It's another piece of presidential history turning up here in Arkansas. And weather and traffic on the force. Uh, Friday night, Saturday morning, uh, we'll bring us our next chance rain. Every 10 minutes. Around the clock. Making your day easier. So rise and shine and count on. Count on. Count on. KARK for today. 
Hi folks, Richard Roberts with Cogswell Motors in Russell. You know, we've been in business since 1949. A dealership doesn't stay in business that long under the same ownership unless you're doing something right, and that's taking care of customers. We have the largest selection of new Ford, Lincoln, Mazda, and pre-owned vehicles in the River Valley. So if you want the most for your trade, the best interest rate on financing, and the best price on a new or pre-owned automobile, come to Russell and see us. We're at 1900 East Main, or visit us on the web at CogswellMotors.com. What do you do if you're Texas A&M about this Johnny Manziel situation? We're sitting here on the 28th of August on Wednesday. Game is Saturday. And he's NCAA, taking all the first team reps. NCAA has said nothing. They've had a quarterback transfer out. He's taking all the first team reps. Do you play Johnny Manziel? Do you sit Johnny Manziel? Really, I think this decision, the Chancellor's already said that he is all about Johnny Manziel. He said he is innocent and he just he stands behind him. This all comes Lord. down to the head coach, in my opinion. Uh, there's nobody else who's going to make this decision and make it stick. It's going right. to be Kevin Sumlin. And Kevin Sumlin alone, and that's why my decision is what it's going to be. We're back here on the Sports Blitz. Mark Freeman, Brad Caldwell, Maddie Lassiter. What do you do if you're Texas A&M? Uh, do you play Johnny Manziel or do you not? Wes Domery says play him. They don't stand a chance to win a championship without him anyway. So where do you stand on this, Brad? He's going to play. Okay. Now, where do I stand? What would you do? Probably play him. And why? Because the NCAA is not going to do anything. I mean, it's just flat out. I mean, his chancellor comes out in his support. And then what I love about what they did is not only did he come out in his support, but then he said, you know, it's pretty ridiculous that he can't make money on his own signature. You know, he just threw it out there kind of like, well, you know what? He's he's guilty, but <laughs> yeah, uh, it doesn't matter. It's stupid. Then This rule's stupid, and I think we should probably change it right now. Yeah. You know, again. It is stupid. Again, though, they have Cam Newton's lawyers that basically went through this whole thing. I, and – we're, you're hearing nothing. NCAA comes down, and they talk to Johnny Manziel on Sunday for six hours, and you're really hearing nothing coming out of that. Guess what? He's going to play. They are going to. They may do something. I don't know what they'll do. They're not going to do anything to they, him because they anything might. they do to him is an acknowledgement of some sort of guilt. They're not going to do anything to him. Man. They're not. It's sad. They're going to Reggie that's, Bush it. That's sad. Look, Reggie, this, well, USC got hammered pretty good. I'm just saying – USC didn't do anything to Reggie Bush. Yeah, but you they didn't sit him he, or anything. By the time the NCAA came in on that, it was already he was gone. He's playing the NFL. So they that's that's to my point. Go ahead. That's to your point. Yeah, it's to my point because well, this all comes down to Kevin Sumlin, and if he has to make the decision, he's who's the hottest name going into the NFL next year as far as coaches that that the NFL is going to come after. You think Kevin so? Sumlin. He's really? one of them. Oh, if he's not number one, he's in the top three. As far as coaches well, that could make the jump, especially if Chip Kelly does anything at yeah. all this year with the Eagles. Okay. Oh, that's a good point. Well, Kevin Sumlin's the guy. What does he care? He's going to play him, and then he's going to bolt if there's some sort of issue. If there's not and he doesn't like the job offers, he'll stay. But if there's some sort of issue, he's going to Pete Carroll it and say, deuces, I don't want anything to do with this, yeah. just like Pete Carroll did at USC. How, if I'm Kevin Sumlin and my job is to win football games – it's not my job to be the NCAA and do investigative yeah. stuff. I don't care. I know Johnny Manziel's a punk off the field, but he's the Heisman Trophy winner on it. He's playing. Well, I mean, just to just to tell you, he's taking all the first team reps. I mean, that's pretty much that's pretty much it. I mean, a coach does not let a guy take all the first team reps and then go into a game and start somebody else unless the guy gets injured coming off the bus. So they're playing him. They're, that's what they're going to do. How many times have you seen the NCAA go back and say, okay, you have to forfeit these games because this dude was ineligible when he played? I'm just USC, I guess. They did it with Reggie Bush. Yeah, but I'm talking about while a guy is playing. Yeah, well, no. They, that's what I'm saying. They won't do it while he's playing, so there's and, not going to be any and consequences. It's not, and it's not like those Reggie Bush games were taken away. They won those games. The exactly. NCAA came that's, in. That's said, why you play him. Yeah, the NCAA came in and said, well, you didn't win them. You, you lost. Matter of fact, you didn't even play them. In fact, that whole year, you were 0-12. Really, we were. Really? Because our te- our fans got to go to Arkansas and watch them pound the crap out of Arkansas. Actually, we got to go. That was the year that we went to USC. Well, either way, they yeah. pounded the crap out of Arkansas, <sighs> and yeah, made us like it. And I don't think you remember the phone call we had after that game, right? Oh my what, lord! What are you doing? Oh, nothing. I'm too busy killing yeah. us. <laughs> 
I was not happy after that game. We we remember those feelings. Those feelings don't go away because that game that. never happened. I remember that. And then I remember in 06 being in the stadium with USC on the field. And, and I asked uh, Sean where he was. And he was trying to jump off the back of the stadium. Because <laughs> we were, sta- we were sitting so up mad. there. We were four rows from the top. And I'm, I'm holding him, trying to keep him from jumping off the stadium. Not oh, really, but it speaking, was horrible. Speaking of Sean, he makes a good point here. He says, if Johnny Freefall doesn't get suspended, <laughs> and he won't, the NCAA should send Des Bryant a gift bag and apology. Sean, Boy, he ain't lying. Sean, call. Call. Johnny Football is in the same situation that Des Bryant is in. Uh, AJ Green before worse. him, way worse. Uh, well, I'm just saying, like he's not going to get suspended, but Des Bryant lost his whole season for the most part. But, uh, AJ Green lost a couple games because he sold a jersey. It's the same thing. The problem is, is you've got tree hugging lefties running the NCAA, and they don't believe in punishment. That's the problem. Okay. They well, you, they don't. When do you ever see lefties ever believe in punishment? There's I'm no a, consequences I'm left-handed, for your action. so let's just... Uh, that's not what I'm talking about. I know what you're talking about. I, that's not what on. I'm talking about. Johnny Manziel is going to play. He's going to play. We're and in agree- you, you thought everybody was going to be in, in disagreement with you, and we're all in agreement. He's well, going to play. In my, the- my thoughts aren't necessarily that he's going to play as much as he should play. I, and I'm not saying that he if he breaks the rules, that's all right. Problem is, in this country, you're innocent until proven guilty. If he can't be proven guilty, and that's why he's going to play, because they can't prove him guilty right now. They even five years from now, if they can, the fa- what difference does it make? You can't take the oh. memories of Johnny Football on the field out of people's minds. You can't take those losses. You really can't even take the loss off the book. Remember Arkansas, I was hearing this talked about yesterday. They still got the losses to USC on the books, even though those games never happened. Johnny Ohio Manziel, State, same way. Don't even get me started. That's the biggest load of crap. In history, in my opinion. Hey, we're going to suspend you guys. You're going to sign this piece of paper that says you're not going to play the first five games of next year because we're going to make a bunch of money on this Sugar Bowl, and we wouldn't if you weren't playing. Screw the NCAA. That's all it's, I'm saying. It's They're crazy. Idiots. They're idiots. It's crazy. And that's why Johnny Manziel is going to play. Uh, he's going to play. He's going to do well. Texas a and is not going to win the national championship anyway. Is he going to win be... the Heisman again? No. Heck no. He could put up twice the numbers he did this year, and there is no way they're handing him the Heisman Trophy this year. Because it of really what, yeah. I wouldn't even make him eligible. If I were the Heisman people, I would say, congratulations on winning the Heisman Trophy. You can come stand up on the stage. You are. There is no way you're sitting out there in front, and there is no way we're going to let people vote on your name. No way. The way you represent yeah, yourself and your university it's and It's not up us, to the Heisman people, though. It's up to ESPN, and it's up to the media. If I'm a media, I'm a member of the media. There I is no, I wouldn't even put him on the ballot Not if I everybody had one. feels like you. Most people, people there want, are a lot of idiots out there. Most, You're right. Most people like shock and awe, and that, that's going to draw ratings. If Johnny Manziel no is way. sitting there, they wouldn't give t- they wouldn't give young co- young players like a- Adrian Peterson a chance because he's young. There's no way that they're going to let somebody as controversial as Johnny Manziel win the Heisman again. No way. Four degree guarantee right here. Okay. Texas A and M wins ten ball games. Johnny Manziel sitting in New York waiting to see if he wins it. He may not win it. But he will be there in the finals. I'll give you this then. On August 28th, Johnny Manziel will not be in New York for the Heisman Trophy trophy ceremony, regardless. It doesn't matter if he puts up twice the numbers. Because they don't want. Because if he's there, he's got a chance to win. He's not going to have a chance to win. Yeah, but they know who's going to win before they take somebody, take these finalists up there. I'm just saying they're not even going to take that chance of putting him in the conversation. And you also got to know this regionally is how this thing is voted, and there's a lot of voters in Texas. Yeah, that's true. Johnny Manziel is not going to win the Heisman. He's not. Even I'm not saying he's going to win it. I'm saying he's going to be there because well, he will draw ratings. Let's look real quickly. Sean, Sean just doesn't like Houston Nut or the whole NCAA. <laughs> well, I don't stuff. like Houston Nut either. He said, "I bet Houston Nut actually probably does count those those games on his record as wins." Now he moral just flipped victories. them over. They're more. <laughs> <laughs> moral victories for Houston. Nutt well, that's why Mike the... Markison's coaching at community college in Northeast Mississippi now. Not, not that we have anything against community college, Weldon Braxton, but you haven't coached at Arkansas and Wisconsin and Ole Miss. And speaking of Weldon Braxton, he told a story about Mike Markison and how his uh, his favorite word started with F, and he said it about every other word. Yeah. So uh, if you're a guy like that and nobody likes you, you end up at community college. See, Weldon's just starting. He's going this way. Mike Markison is taking the opposite trajectory. <laughs> yeah, he's definitely trajectory. On. So. The opposite trajectory for sure. All right, it's college football season, folks. Tomorrow night, we will be kicking off the season with a bang. 
North Carolina, South Carolina. I expect that the Heisman campaign of, um, I almost said Marcus Lattimore, of Jadavion Clowney will, because they seem like the same kind of South Carolina, I don't know. Anyway, yeah. both South Carolina Gamecocks and both had the same sort of uh, hype behind them, but in different ways. I feel like North Carolina is coming into a, a beatdown as far as defensively. They're not going to be able to deal with the physicality of South Carolina. I've already and they're made my guarantee to, on that one. You've got South Carolina winning? Well, I think South Carolina's going to win the game. I just said Hog fans are going to take that game and say, we can beat South Carolina. They don't look very good on offense. That's Well, that's what's going to happen. You're oh, right. yeah. Just like the Ole Miss Vanderbilt game, it's going to be the same thing. We've seen this a thousand times. Well, in the first game of the year, especially when you play somebody halfway decent, like North Carolina will be much better, in my opinion, than Louisiana Lafayette. Sure. You're going to compare what Arkansas did to Lafayette well, and what South Carolina exactly. did to North Carolina. Here's the thing. Like if, Arkansas, if Arkansas wins by three touchdowns against Lafayette, we're going to be like, oh, we could win the national championship. This was the greatest Sun Belt team to ever play. <laughs> And, and then, the same people are saying Arkansas State couldn't stay on the field. That's exactly right. And then they're going to also say that about South Carolina. When South Carolina wins, we'll say South Carolina's going to win about 24-14. They're going to be like, oh, South Carolina looks horrible. They're the worst team in the SEC. It's just the way it works. But I'm looking forward to it tomorrow. I've got a party set up at the house, and uh, I'm ready to go. I got the surround sound system hooked up. Thanks, Matty. Uh, he he helped me out there dealing with my screaming wife who was not happy that day because of the, <laughs> the surround sound situation. But we have got it taken care of. We've got it together. We're going to have some kids over from church to uh, watch some football. Not tomorrow, but Saturday. But tomorrow, I'm going to be parked in front of that TV all night long. From 5 o'clock. The kickoff of this game is at 5 no. o'clock, and they've got a doubleheader with Ole no, Miss and Vandy next. Van- Ole, Miss and, of, Ole Miss and Vandy is the second game. Yeah. Okay. I believe. I believe South Carolina, North Carolina is the first game, and Ole Miss Vandy is the second game. I'll look, though, to make absolutely sure. Uh, but that's what? Sean this, said what? No, uh, Jason, he texted me. He said that sounded like a good drive time caller. <laughs> oh, yeah. Five o'clock is the North Carolina, South Carolina game. And then, actually, there are, apparently there are more games. USC plays tomorrow at 10 o'clock. Um, USC Hawaii. USC Hawaii. And then you've got Ole Miss and Vanderbilt. We both said – on Monday that we uh, when we gave our predictions, I had Ole Miss and you had Vanderbilt winning that one, right? It's right. at Vanderbilt. Well, I like Vandy at home. I think that Ole Miss is a little overrated this year. Um, although I think what's going to happen is you're going to have to get into their depth a little bit to kind of expose because I think the top 22 are pretty good. Uh, but at the same time, whether they win or lose that game, they're going to be struggling – for the first part of the season. Their schedule is brutal. We talked about that on Monday. The schedule is unbelievably brutal. Like, Arkansas is tough. I think Ole Miss, their stretch is just a little bit tougher. It is. It is. Well, you you touched on it. There are some games on there that – Man, I mean, they go to Bama and Texas, and then they've got LSU coming out. The only break they have is at Auburn, and everybody expects Auburn to be a little better this year than they are. I mean, I'm interested to see what Auburn does. You know, Auburn was horrible last year, two and ten, zero and eight in conference. Um, Now they've got Malzahn, and you know, a lot of people are are saying that he is the savior of Auburn football and all of that. We'll see what happens. I, I'm not sure. They don't have any quarterbacks whatsoever, in my opinion. The quarterback that they have threw 24 interceptions in JUCO last year. Ooh. Yeah. Who's this quarterback? I can't – I'll have what, to look no, what, what team's quarterback? Auburn. Auburn's new quarterback. Well, Mitchell, I want to say, is his name, but I'll, I'll check that sheesh. real quick. That's rough. Uh, well, I think Auburn's going to be a little better. The this, this system will – will pick up and those guys a lot of those guys are are gus guys anyway as far as recruits of right. his uh even if they are playing safety now right. <laughs> they uh there are a lot of the guys that that he recruited for that system so i'm not going to be surprised if I, they win more than two games i'm a gus fan i am i love gus's system i about when you don't have a quarterback that can run it um it makes it very very tough for you to be very successful at all and right now auburn just doesn't have a quarterback I mean, Kyle Frazier was supposed to be this guy. He was supposed to be the golden boy, the the guy that was supposed to take the program to the next level in the system, and he's playing safety right now. And they missed on him, and because they missed on him, they've set the program back a couple years. Yeah, well, that's that's true. Like Arkansas got lucky on that one, Brandon Allen instead of Kyle Frazier. Well, you know, that's that's something that was a debate. You know, Brandon Allen has set out he's a redshirt sophomore. You know, Frazier's a junior. He's played uh, both years that he played at Auburn there, and um, 
at this point, it looks like Arkansas has got the better end of the deal there, and that was a Petrino call, which he knows a little bit about quarterbacks. Just not but, how to develop But we'll him. see, you know. I mean, Brandon Allen, if he comes out and he looks like he did against Louisiana Monroe or Alabama, uh, we probably didn't get – nobody really got a good deal on that one. <laughs> <laughs> they both could have gone with somebody else. Uh, Zeke Pike. No. No, nope, Zeke Pike's heard. gone. Yeah, he was uh, he was booty. I think he's playing um, tight end at Louisville now. Are you serious? Mm-hmm. Wow. Well, he was a big name, and he was an Arkansas guy, then he went to Marshall. Auburn. And I'm sorry, not Mitchell, Marshall. Nick, from Auburn. Nick Marshall is their starting quarterback. 6'1", 210-pound junior. Huh. He played D-back at Georgia. Okay. I've, I've heard that name then. Okay. Well, and the other, the running back at Floor at uh, Georgia, one of them's name's Marshall, so that's probably why that name sounds so familiar. All right, we got to hit a break. Uh, we've given you as much as we can from everywhere else. It's time to talk hogs. I know you're looking forward to our hog talk segment. We're going to look at expectations for players like Brandon Allen. We're going to look at what would be success. What are you What are you going to deem success from Saturday's game? And then we're going to get into some deeper levels of uh, preparation for Saturday's game. Over 69 years of treating you like family, Peter's Family Living's main goal is customer service. That is their promise to their customers. They offer in-house financing on furniture and appliances and a 30-day money-back guarantee. For a friendly, no-pressure atmosphere, visit Peter's Family Living today at 201 North Arkansas Avenue, Russellville, online at petersfamilyliving.com or call 479-968-2929. If you didn't count on KARK for today, this morning, here's what you met. Updated news. Please continue searching for suspects after a home intrusion overnight. Developing stories. It's another piece of presidential history turning up here in Arkansas. And weather and traffic on the force. Uh, Friday night, Saturday morning, uh, will bring us our next chance rain. Every 10 minutes. Around the clock. Making your day easier. So rise and shine and count on. Count on. Count on. KARK for today. RiverValleyLeader.com is the number one local source for instant news in the River Valley, offering HD video and live streaming along with top-notch coverage of all the news and events around the area. The River Valley Leader is the only place to go for all the information you need. Check out the newest local business featured on the site, as well as police news and coverage from important meetings along with the personal stories, all at one convenient click. Check out rivervalleyleader.com. Hi folks, Richard Roberts with Cogswell Motors in Russell. You know, we've been in business since 1949. A dealership doesn't stay in business that long under the same ownership unless you're doing something right, and that's taking care of customers. We have the largest selection of new Ford, Lincoln, Mazda, and pre-owned vehicles in the River Valley. So if you want the most for your trade, the best interest rate on financing, and the best price on a new or pre-owned automobile, come to Russell and see us. We're at 1900 East Main, or visit us on the web at CogswellMotors.com. Mark Freeman, Brad Caldwell, Maddie Lassiter here in the Cogsville Motors studios. Thank you for joining us at RiverValleyLeader.com for today's episode of the Sports Blitz. It's Wednesday. Just a couple days left, folks. Just hold on. It was, what, 72 hours until Razorback game day. Uh, Hogs kick off 3 o'clock against Louisiana Lafayette there in Fayetteville. If you've not got your tickets, we're giving two of them away on Friday. You can enter to win by going to rivervalleyleader.com, sharing our post about the ticket giveaway and liking our page. Make sure you've done those things and you're automatically entered to win these two tickets. We will draw Friday just before noon, and we will let you know who won. What? Uh, you got some conversations going on about uh, South Carolina. Not, yes, yes. It's just... <laughs> Sean's just giving me all this stuff, and I said, call. And he's like, no. no. Uh, <laughs> like he's texting me like 300 things point out. Just call me. Let me know. It's I, all good. I'm all in. It's all good. We got his information. We'll uh, we'll pass it along. He, he didn't think South Carolina's that good, which offensively, there's nothing different about South Carolina in the last five years. They have They've lost the some guys. skill position players. That's going to be interesting to see what they can do. Is Ace Sanders back? Uh, No. 
Ace he was the only gone. one that always worried me. He was but they do have Ellington. Ellington had a and he's a, bad. A, he's yeah, he's back. And then Wilds at running back is also back. Um, then they've also this is from Sean, so I'll attribute it to him. He said Shaq Rowland is a highly recruited freshman, um, and he but he is still a freshman at wideout. You know who else was a highly recruited freshman and is now a redshirt sophomore quarterback for the Arkansas Razorbacks? Who? Brandon Allen. Yes, he is. He is going to get his first uh, start of the 2013 season. He's beaten out Brandon Mitchell, sent him all the way to NC State. So he's starting. And he's going to start for NC there. State. And Brandon Allen's going to get his uh, his first taste of the Brett Bielema era on Saturday. What do you expect out of Brandon Allen? Well, number one, it should make people feel good that we sent a guy to NC State, basically, and he's a starter. Brandon Allen beat him out. Okay, that's yep. a major college football team right there. And he was he's in his first year of the system. Of course, they have a brand-new uh, coach, so that has something to do with that. But at the same time, Allen did a good job in the spring of beating him out. You know, here's my thing with Brandon Allen. He's got every opportunity to do better than what he did last year. He was thrown to the Wolves last year. He came out in his first drive of the season last year and looked good, and then from every other time he looked horrible. But he was playing against Alabama. He was playing against uh, UL Monroe when things were – it was just one of those avalanches. You just could not stop. It just The ball started rolling, and it just kept rolling, and Arkansas couldn't do anything about that. And a lot of people attribute his bad play to saying, well, he's not going to be very good. I think Brandon Allen's going to be all right. I think he's going to be a first-year starter in the SEC. I think he's going to have some good moments. I think he's going to have some bad moments. But – what I do like is that this system is going to be pretty quarterback friendly, and they're not going to ask him to do the things that Petrino was going to ask him to do um, as the starting quarterback this year. So I look for him to have a solid year. I look for him to throw for somewhere over 2,000 yards, and I look for him to throw somewhere probably about 15 touchdowns, and he'll throw more touchdowns than he will interceptions. And I think, you know, we're going to be. Um, we're going to be what we are. What? Which game was it that uh, Brandon Allen basically just kept having to throw? Was it the it was Monroe, Monroe game? game? Well, he just kept having to throw. And I was just thinking, Petrino, grow a brain. You know, Paul Petrino, grow a brain. Run the football. And don't make him throw it every down. If you'll do something else – Maybe he'll get in a rhythm. If you hand, sometimes it sounds crazy, but sometimes a quarterback gets in a little better, better rhythm, handing the ball off than just having to fling it all over the place and just, oh well, that's incomplete, that's incomplete, that's incomplete, that's incomplete. Well, maybe get a running game going. You had this guy named Nile Davis. You had this guy named Dennis Johnson. Those right. guys are doing pretty well in the NFL right now, right. as far as preseason goes. Paul Petrino just absolutely crapped the bed on that one. So I, Brandon Allen was put in a terrible position last year. And the point that you made that I like is that he's going to be in a lot more uh, quarter, not, not necessarily quarterback friendly because, boy, the quarterbacks could put up some numbers in those Petrino system, but a more uh, tailored offense to his abilities at this point. Uh, he's not going to be asked to do stuff that he can't do. It, it's What is the definition of insanity? Well, we saw it last year at Arkansas. Do, we do the same thing over and over and over and expect a different result. You knew sure. Brandon Allen wasn't quite ready to be Tyler Wilson yet, and then you're asking him to do the same stuff. That was stupid. It was ignorant. They're not going to ask him to do that this year. He's got Jonathan Williams. He's got Alex Collins. He's got some good tight ends. He's got some serviceable wide receivers. So what do you think he's going to do? He's going to take advantage of what Arkansas is going to do well. He's going to pound the football, right. and he's going to be successful. Well, it, number one, if Arkansas's offensive line, it's got to be better than it was last year because – um, if it's not, Brandon Allen's not going to be very good. Tyler Wilson was a seasoned quarterback, and he was pretty good last year, even though his numbers weren't as good as they were the year before. Now, there's a combination of things, but the offensive line, as bad as it was last year, was a big part of why Wilson struggled. If the offensive line struggles like that with Allen, we're probably not going to see Allen be s successful. We're going to be talking about new quarterbacks coming in next year. If Brandon Allen gets some protection – um, again, he's not going to be placed in bad positions. I believe Chaney uh, will put him in good positions to succeed. I think that we'll be looking at a guy that will be uh, a very good, very serviceable SEC quarterback. He reminds me, now I'm not saying he's as good, but his skill set reminds me a lot of Aaron Murray's. 
Uh, he's got a little bit of leg. In fact, he's probably got a little more legs than Aaron Murray does. He's not just a huge arm, but he's got a good arm. And, you know, Aaron Murray, his best attribute at this point is his experience and his savvy at quarterback. You know, Brandon Allen can probably grow into that at some point. It's just not going to be this year. Um, the success of the Razorbacks is not hinging on Brandon Allen, but if he plays well, then Arkansas does have a chance to play pretty well this year. Can't uh, get a but, beat. But you, the running game is where it's going to be at with this football team. If Arkansas can run the football, then they're going to be okay. They're not going to be bad this year. Well, he just can't get them beat. That's the that's, that's the it. point. And that's what the offensive coaches are – they know that. Brett Bielema, and he understands that. So he's going to put them in the, in the best position to help the team win. Uh, I spoke about Brandon Allen and how he's going to have success, but I wanted to ask how do you define – through this first game, success for Brandon Allen and some of these other players. What does it? What Sorry. is it going to take from those guys for you to come out of Saturday saying that it was a success? Saturday success. I mean, not just a win because everybody right. wants to win. If you lose, it's a complete. Well, you failure. remember last year the Jacksonville State game? A lot of people came out saying, you know, this doesn't look like the number eight team in the nation. And of course, then we found out the next week they really didn't look like one. Yeah. Uh, you know. The lines are going to be right there. That's going to be the number one thing that I'm going to look at. If Arkansas is getting a push, how many times has Arkansas entered a season, especially in the last five years in the Petrino era, even though last year was the Petrino era, um, <laughs> how, many, how many times have we looked and seen the offensive line kind of getting pushed around? Now, Arkansas was – and look, again, I'm, I'm not going to be one to badmouth Bobby Petrino. There are a lot of people that like to pile on him right now. Bobby Petrino got this program to a different level than it's been and it would have ever gotten under Houston Nuts. So I, I'm not going to badmouth him, but there were definitely some flaws in his game. There's no doubt. Um, how many times have we got to the first game and played Patsy, nobody, and our offensive line get pushed around? And our defensive line not getting any pressure. We're not getting any sacks. Last year, Arkansas didn't get one sack, maybe one sack against Jacksonville State. They weren't able to get much pressure against Jacksonville State. Uh, gave up 21 first-half points against Jacksonville State last year. And everybody's looking around like, what in the world is going on right now? If we're not doing that and Arkansas wins the game by more then 10 points. I believe that it will be a successful first game under the Bob, or the Bobby Petrino, Brett Bielema era. Wisconsin last year averaged 236 yards a game rushing. Arkansas averaged 114. Uh, you meet somewhere in the middle for the first game, I'll be all right with that. Now, actually, you probably need, if you're playing a team that's weaker than you as far as physically, uh, Arkansas should be able to push around Louisiana Lafayette. You ought to get more than you're going to average for the year. Right. Uh, I'm sorry, 118 is what Arkansas averaged last year. I would like to see 200 yards rushing from the uh, – that would prove to me the offensive right. line and the running backs did pretty well. You know, it, it's so interesting because when Houston Nutt was here, we wanted to see 200 yards passing. The yeah. first what? the first game that – and I know where you're going with this. I'm just going to point this out. The first game under the Petrino era, we threw for 300 yards. Now, we almost got beat, but we threw for 300 yards. Now we're back to, man, if we could just rush for 200 yards, I, I just want to see balance. I want yeah. to see Arkansas be able to throw the ball and run the football because that is how you win football games in Division One in the SEC, and that's how you get to be a national championship-level team. Look, Alabama – uh, last year, A.J. McCarron threw for 30 touchdowns. 30. Yep. That's a good number in a 14-game season. That is, that's huge. So it's not like Alabama just hands the ball off and pounds it. That's where their game is predicated. But the, the passing game is still important to Alabama, and that's where Arkansas wants to be. Alabama last year rushed for 226 yards a game. They passed for 218 yards a game. Eight and yards difference. And that's balance. When you look at uh, Wisconsin, as long as Wisconsin did not have bad quarterback issues, go back and look at the stats under Bielema. As long as they didn't have bad quarterback issues, they were very close to balance. Now, not totally, except for the Russell Wilson era, where Russell Wilson threw for 18 yards less than they rushed for that year. Yeah, that was close. You're you're right. Uh, last year. Brett Bielema's Wisconsin team rushed for 236 and threw for 156. So it was about 80 yard but difference there. By the time they got to the Rose Bowl, they were playing a fourth team walk on at quarterback. Yeah, and I'm not saying that there's something wrong with that. I, I don't care about balance. We've always talked about the threat of balance. 
I just don't want the other team to know what Arkansas is going to do every single play. Oh, it's a run. Oh, it's a pass. Sure. Oh, it's a pass. Oh, it's a run. Because if you don't have that threat yeah, right. that I could pass it on any down or I could run it on any down, I don't care if it's second and 10 and that's a passing down everywhere, Arkansas is going to run it. Or Arkansas, it's first and 10, and in the Bobby Petrino era, it was a pass right. every time. I don't want everybody to know uh, – that's not gonna what's gonna be defined as success for me as far as if Arkansas rushes for exactly as many yards as they pass for. Sure. I don't care about that. Uh, for for me to success following the season, it'll be to look back and say, all right, well, I, I can see that that you made a concerted effort to pass the ball. You made a concerted effort to run the ball. Nobody had a clue what was coming. You were able to impose your will. That to me is gonna be number one if you can impose your will. And this is where I'm going with this one. I think you'll agree with me because I know this drove you nuts. How many times in the Bobby Petrino era did Arkansas go for it on fourth and one, try to run the football right down somebody's throat and get stuffed in the back? Because they never did it before. Why would you think you could do it on fourth and one? How many times they do it? Several. Several times I remember. They'd line up Broderick Green back there and try to hand him the football. (laughs) Well, Broderick Green, he's coming off the sideline. I wonder what Arkansas (laughs) is going to do. Exactly. And they'd try to run it up the middle where offensive line was horrible except for a six-game stretch in the uh, 2010 season. Everything else was just bad. Um I want to see us be able to line up against somebody on fourth and one and run it right at them and get it. I want to see them do that on first, second, and third down also. Sure, but you know there's going to come a situation in the year where they're going to line up. It's going to be fourth down and one, fourth down and two. And from every indication on the Brett Bielema side of things, he's going to run the football. In fact, um, in one of the scrimmages, Jim Chaney went and shotgun on third down and two, and he actually said, look, we don't do shotgun on third down and two. I'm just going to let you know that now. I like that. Well, I sort of like that. I mean, I like I like Jim Chaney bringing a little different you know, mentality and attitude sure. as far as just a variety. But what I like about the way that they're, they're doing this is that Brett Bielema and Jim Chaney, and you've heard the good stuff that Chaney's been talking about, Brandon Allen, they're not going to put him in situations that he won't be successful right. or that he doesn't have a very great probability of being successful. Uh, with that being said, uh, you've got all the pieces. You've got the coaching staff. You've got some players. And I know not all the pieces to win a national championship, but all the pieces to be competitive. Uh, you've heard from Nick Saban. What does he say about Sam Pittman? That's the best offensive line and the best offensive line we played against all year. That's the best offensive line coach in America. Well, That's why I offered him a job. Exactly. So I feel like that you've got all the pieces there to begin the, the process to success. I'm looking forward to a good Arkansas football season, although a good season to me this year. If they win six games, I'll be all right. they win seven games, you're going to see me screaming from the mountaintops. I want to so see happy. improvement from what we saw last year, which isn't that hard. That's not a very high bar to even jump. But I think with the schedule this year, they could go the same four and eight and be better than they were last year. Yeah. Um, obviously, I don't think they're going to go four and eight, but I think that it would be a, a good season if we saw improvement throughout the season. All right, we got to hit a break. Ron Martin asked a good question. He says, do you want balance in yards or balance in play calling? He said the Bama stat that we just gave showed balance in yards, but I'm, not, I'm sure they ran more running plays than passing plays. What do we think? We'll give you that and a little bit more looking forward to the actual game on Saturday here in just a moment. If you didn't count on KARK for today, this morning, here's what you may. Updated news. Please continue searching for suspects after a home intrusion overnight. Developing stories. There's another piece of presidential history turning up here in Arkansas. And weather and traffic on the force. Uh, Friday night, Saturday morning, uh, we'll bring us our next chance right now. Every 10 minutes. Around the clock. Making your day easy. So rise and shine and count on. Count on. Count on. KARK for today. Today, there are more than 20 brands of cars being sold in America. So to be noticed, Ford and Cogswell Motors have to go further than anyone thought we could. How does Ford stand out above the crowd? Not just with plug-in vehicles like the new 2013 Ford Fusion Energy that gets a projected 100 miles per gallon equivalent, but also with a line of gas vehicles equipped with the innovative EcoBoost engines combining power and efficiency, plus a full measure of technologically advanced features. We invite you to stop into Cogswell Motors today. We go further than anyone thought we could. So that you can go further too. RiverValleyLeader.com is the number one local source for instant news in the River Valley. 
offering HD video and live streaming along with top-notch coverage of all the news and events around the area. The River Valley Leader is the only place to go for all the information you need. Check out the newest local business featured on the site as well as police news and coverage from important meetings along with the personal stories all at one convenient click. Check out rivervalleyleader.com. Over 69 years of treating you like family, Peter's Family Living's main goal is customer service. That is their promise to their customers. They offer in-house financing on furniture and appliances and a 30-day money-back guarantee. For a friendly, no-pressure atmosphere, visit Peter's Family Living today at 201 North Arkansas Avenue, Russellville, online at petersfamilyliving.com or call 479-968-2929. Welcome back into the Sports Blitz here in the Cogswell Motors studio. Thank you for watching via RiverValleyLeader.com. Mark Freeman, Brad Caldwell, Maddie Lassiter here to bring you the latest. We're talking hogs. It is our Hog Talk segment. Looking forward to the game on Saturday. And we're asking right now, what will be success? What will you define as success from this game? Obviously, you want to win. I've put that in big, bold letters here. If you lose the game, it's a colossal failure. You've got to win the game. Uh, but we asked, We talked about balance, and Brad mentioned it, and Ryan Martin mentioned it in a uh, comment. He talked about, you know, Alabama, they ran for and rushed for, or ran for and passed for about the same amount of yards. He figured they ran more running plays than passing plays, which is probably right. I'd have to look at the numbers. Uh, but to me, I said before the break that it wasn't about necessarily how many yards you, you ran for or how many yards you passed for. It's more about – the defense not knowing every single sure. stinking play what you're sure. going to run. Uh, so what do you see as success in that? And, what you know, you're going to strive to get to where Alabama is, but a lot of that's on the defensive side too. Well, anytime that your yardage is similar, then really your your play calling is not. Um, it's probably more like 60-40, somewhere in there. Run over the pass. That's probably what we're going to see. I mean, we're going to see very, something very similar to that where it's probably 60-40, uh, you're going to see balance and yardage, but I don't think you will see balance and play calling. I think that this coaching staff believes that you hand the ball off and you get your four yards on first down, you hand it off again and you get your four yards, and then you might throw it on third and two on play action. But that works. That's that's balance. That's keeping people – I say it's balance. That's people keeping people off guard. Yeah. Uh, that way they don't know. You know, they might run it again on third and two. You know, there was a time against Michigan where Michigan had Rich Rodriguez and they had uh, – uh, Denard Robinson was at his peak and, and doing his thing. Wisconsin ran the ball against Michigan 32 straight times. Kept the ball away from them. They're going to do that. So, um, I think what we will see – is more of a, a balanced yardage versus a balanced play calling. But me, I love a 50-50 game. Of course, I like to see the ball thrown. That's, I do too. That's just the way I am. Um, but they didn't ask me. They haven't called me and said, Brad, which would you like to see on uh, Saturday? Would you like to see us be a little more 50-50? Would you like to see us throw the ball more? They're not asking me that. No. And what they're trying to do is say, we know what is successful. We're going to do it, and we're going to do it well. And – I believe that that's what we're going to see. 60-40, probably run to pass. Cool. All right. What what do you define as success? I've got a couple of things written down here. What do you define as success for some of these other uh, some of these other players? Like guys like Alex Collins. We talked about Brandon Allen, Alex Collins, Jonathan Williams, uh, these guys that are the new wide receivers, Horton and Herndon. I say new, they're seniors, but they're they're new to uh, being asked to step up and really produce. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've got a couple things that I want to uh, to mention here. One, health. If you're going to win the game, and Arkansas, a lot of people expect them, most people expect them to win the game, 10 and a half to 11 right. point spread on the betting line, which is illegal and we do not encourage one way or the other. Uh, reps. Health is big. Reps for some of these guys like Alex Collins. You want to see him. I want to see him run the ball ten or twelve times mm-hmm. at least, just so that you can get him, you know, in, engaged. Uh, progress. I want to see the offensive line and defensive line get better. I definitely, definitely want to see progress from the defensive backs and the linebackers. If and I've talked about this, Louisiana Lafayette's going to try to put them in situations where they have to make a tackle, uh, or else somebody's sure. running for a long gain. Uh, and 
if Arkansas can make the initial tackle rather than, you know, bouncing off like it's been the issue for the last several years, or if uh, the defensive backs don't have a clue there's a football even on the field, let alone being thrown over their ear, uh, that's going to make me angry. Sure. So I want to see progress there. You talked about it just a moment ago as far as running the ball. I want to see an imposed will. I want to see the defensive line say, you're not going to run the ball. You, know, you talked about a zone read type thing and, and running middle zone stuff. And I want the defensive line to say, uh-uh. Not going to sure. happen. You're going to have to try something else yeah. because we're going to tell you what you're going to do. And then I want to see the offensive line be able to do the same thing against an overmatched opponent. Right. I agree with you so. on all fronts there. Um, the zone read part there, Arkansas should be able to dominate on their offensive line uh, or the defensive line versus Lafayette's offensive line. As far as I know, now this could this could be wrong, but when I looked at Lafayette's roster, they had three guys on the whole roster that were over 300 pounds. Three Arkansas has a two deep depth chart worth of offensive linemen that are over 300 pounds, and few and a few defensive tackles that are over 300 pounds. So just size wise, sheer size wise, Arkansas should be able to dominate up front, and they should be able to stop what Louisiana Lafayette is going to run, which is a ton of zone read. They're going to run it. Um, Inside, they're going to run it outside. They're going to do a lot of things with that. Their quarterback, Broadway, is very quick. He's one of the better quarterbacks in the Sun Belt. A lot of people like his athleticism, so he's going to be one that they definitely have to account for. I look for us as to um, be fundamentally sound on both sides of the ball. That would be a victory for me. Um, I would love to see linebackers fill in the gaps. I have said for a long time, this is not just in the Petrino era, but in – the nut era, we haven't seen linebackers play downhill like other people's linebackers yeah. do, where where Arkansas sees a gap or or a linebacker sees a gap and just goes through it and and meets somebody at the line of scrimmage. Jerry Franklin, a guy that ended up with one of if he's not the leading tackler, he's one of the leading tacklers ever at Arkansas. He was the best tackler in Arkansas history to make a, a tackle five yards down the field. You're right. You know. You're right. I have I've yet to see very many guys. Highsmith did it a little bit two years ago where he played downhill. A.J. Turner was a guy that came in and played downhill a little bit. Now, A.J. Turner is not even – he's not even on the radar screen right now. So, maybe Arkansas can get some guys to fill some holes, fill some gaps, and tackle a running back behind the line of scrimmage. That would be incredible. And the defensive backs – we can just see the ball one time <laughs> yeah. just to show there's progress. But defensively, as a whole, we would like to see some improvement because Arkansas's defense has been porous for a long time, and it needs to step up for sure. You know, one thing I'm very excited about seeing is the change in mentality from the defense being – defensive which has been what Arkansas has been for the past forever uh, where they're just basically saying okay uh, don't score on us we're going right. to let you do this and then we're going to tackle you yeah. to saying all right our defense is going to be offensive we're going we're to go after and our defense has been offensive for years but they're going to go <laughs> on the offensive and say you know what there's a gap there that the linebacker can step up and fill and rather than stay here and wait on you and then tackle you for a minimal gain I'm going to stuff you in that hole and I really look forward to the and that's what Chris Ash and this defense Sure. Of, uh, staff and Brett Bielam is all about going out and smashing and I'm looking forward to, to seeing that happen on the defense side. You know side. the term that I'm tired of hearing with Arkansas defense bend but don't break. Yeah. Oh my gosh I'm so tired because number one our bending ended up breaking quite a bit no doubt about it um, I I want to I want to see Arkansas be tough defensively I want to see Arkansas get that tough mindset that that we're we're trying to impose our will on the offense we want to do the very same thing on the defense and this is what this coaching staff was brought in to do um, so let's Put our money where our mouth is, and that's what's coming up on Saturday. Literally. It's, it's literally time to put our money where our mouth is. Well, talking about money, you know, what do they say? You, uh, oh, crap, I can't remember the saying, so I'll just go on. Uh, we're about out of time, but Brian did uh, bring up another good point. He said from 2008 to 2011, Arkansas passed the ball more than it ran every single year. He said uh, – I know that's not what we're going to see anymore. So I look forward to seeing – see, I don't – like I said, I don't care about whether they run or throw. Uh, I just want to see the other team on their heels. And I, really, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter if they run for 400 yards and pass for five yards. If they're scoring points and they're moving the football, and especially against teams like Texas A&M, keeping it out of their hands, sure, uh, I'll be all right with that. I think a conversation that we'll probably have to have somewhere down the road 
because Arkansas fans are on style of play. If you look at the baseball team, their numbers are declining because the style of play changed. Uh, the basketball team, uh, we brought Mike Anderson back in because of style of play. Let's see how people adapt to the Brett Bielema style of play because I think Brett Bielema will ultimately win at Arkansas. I'm not sure that people were going to like his style of play very often. And so we'll see. I think that's a conversation for in the future about seeing how um, people adapt to his style of play and how they like it because I don't think with Arkansas fans it's about all about winning. I, want, I think they want to be entertained. You're not lying. There's and there are a lot of Wisconsin fans who are talking about Brett Bielema. We'll wait till the clock management issues creep up, and wait till you uh, can't throw the ball because you're you know all you can do is run block and just all these issues. And Arkansas is going to have the same type of thing where they're going to have some uh, questions that uh, fans come up with, and they that's it's everywhere, not necessarily right. just Arkansas. Anyone who, anyone who doesn't win the national championship will have to answer questions. About I'm, stuff I'm like so that. interested to see the marriage between Jim Chaney and Brett Bielema and see how this works because Chaney likes to throw the ball. Yep. And he was more of a 50-50 guy. Um, of course, he had Tyler Bray, who was a very good quarterback at Tennessee. It, this, that's probably going to be as telling as anything about this season is how those two can coexist. I don't think that you're going to see – any issue with it except when Jim Chaney goes outside of what Brett Bielema sees as the right thing to do in situations. Such as know, third and such two Such as in third shotgun. and two in the shotgun, exactly. Uh, if on first and ten you're in the shotgun with a running back beside you and Brett Bielema said, you know, even if run past whatever it is, as long as it's not an all-the-time thing and you're sure. still going within the scope of his vision for the team, I think he, that he'll be all right with it. So. Um, my biggest thing, of course, I, I watched – Wisconsin from a very far, so I, I mean, just paid attention because they were, they were in the headlines. But um, I, I think just from what I've gathered, the next step, and I think Bielema understands that, is that he has to be able to develop a little more of a passing game, and I think that's why he brought Cheney in here. Now let's see if he'll let him do that. Man, we're look, looking forward to a good game on Saturday. Looking forward to talking a little bit more about it on Friday. We'll preview that game. We'll actually close up shop on the North Carolina, South Carolina, Ole Miss, Vandy games as well on Friday. So we've got plenty of stuff left to do. We are out of time for today, though, so we're going to let you go. Appreciate you joining us at rivervalleyleader.com for the Sports Blitz. We're here every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. If you've got local sports information you want us to know about, email mark at rivervalleyleader.com. And if you want to know anything about sports during out the during the, our hour of show Monday, Wednesday, Friday, uh, eleven to noon, you can give us a call anytime. Uh, I say if you want to know anything, heck, if you want to let us know something, give us a call at nine six eight news. That's nine six eight six three nine seven. But until Friday, I'm Mark. He's Brad. He's Maddie. We'll see you at eleven o'clock at RiverValleyLeader.com.